thank the Nelman Foundation for Freedom to giving us the opportunity to follow this uh, extraordinary conference. And um, it was uh, really amazing to see how many experts from different countries uh, were united in this conference to share their views, uh, to exchange uh, the, the common aspects and solutions and proposals on this very, very simple and tricky theme of water. Historically, from, uh, I'm a lawyer and I don't understand very much about econo ecological aspects. But historical, from historical, historical angle, I, was, I can state water is one is a source, is one of the oldest sources of con for conflicts in mankind, in the mankind, in history of mankind, and uh, it always has been. Uh, there always has been pr have been problems around water, and I learned today. Uh, from the panelists, how many problems we can have, how many problems you have to solve, we have to solve, and it seems to be a chess game, but a three-dimensional chess game sometimes to answer the question we had today. And, but uh, there is hope, I think. Uh, 50 years ago, we sent men on the moon. And now we are targeting, as mankind, the Mars. Why shouldn't it be possible to provide drinking water to the whole mankind? Uh, and uh, it's not a question of uh, negotiations and legal frameworks. It's just uh, about cooperation, collaboration in this issue to, uh, to deliver uh, drinking water to solve problems about irrigation and so on. And uh, final remark, uh, so you are condemned. You are condemned for cooperation. Because water is not following ideological lines, justifications, or views. Water is always follow, uh, following uh, its trenches, its valleys to the oceans. And there uh, has, it, has water an impact. And uh, perhaps we have seen today the starting point of a new platform, uh, especially for South Asia, to uh, get it on a common base, uh, to find solution for all these uh, Im very important questions about water. So thank you very much for being here. And I think it was a great opportunity to start this very, very important discussion. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Some Relief Foundation, uh, one of today's core organizers, uh, thank you very much for attending and for the discussion. Personally, for me, it's highly enlightening because I'm an economist by profession. Sometimes we are like horse with blinkers. We really don't think about other issues such as very, very important issues such as climate change and sustainable development. Um, I think this is yet another successful partnership with FNF uh, for Samridi because this is a series of conferences where uh, I really would like to thank Dr. Klein for including us in the process because as an economic policy think tank, we, said we tend to focus only on certain types of issues, whereas Dr. Klein has introduced us. Before this, it was the uh, Pride Conference, and now we are talking about uh, ecology and environment in general. Uh, so I think for us as a foundation, it was a very big learning opportunity and we'd really like to thank you for giving us that opportunity. Um, thank you so much for participants because without you, the conference wouldn't be a success. Uh, so I really don't want to stress further on how much the topic, you know, uh, we've already discussed a lot of salient points. I just want to take uh, a few takeaways for me personally from hearing all the discussion as no expert on water resource management whatsoever. Um, uh, first, I think, uh, the need for regional approach and a basin approach uh, to find acceptable solutions on a multi multitude of cross-cutting issues on water management. That came as a highlight for me personally. 
second is the understanding of costs and benefits. Again, as an economist, I tend to think that way. Uh, it's the understanding of costs and benefits across borders uh, for river-induced problems, uh, for river-induced opportunities. We really need to capitalize on those. Understanding not only water, but its relation to livelihood, to ecology and other things uh, closely associated. I think that's another takeaway, very key takeaway for me. I think there were a lot of solutions that were also discussed, and that means that solutions are available and can only be found through further dialogue, be it further dialogue between civil society organizations, between experts, but most importantly, further dialogue at the cross-boundary level uh, to community level. We really need to engage a lot more community level participation is another takeaway for me. Uh, all the discussion around success or failure today, at least for me personally, revolved around community participation. So I think that was one of the key takeaways. Uh, if you look at the failure of projects versus which projects were successful, uh, the analysis that you provided as experts, for me, community participation was a highlight. Along with that was political will and listening to people. Um, so there's a very strong incentive, I think, again, for civil society organizations and experts uh, to continue advocacy, engage at the grassroots level, uh, especially stakeholders whose lives are going to be directly affected by the big projects we discuss as well as the policies we discuss. Um, and I think from the organizer's side, I think I would like to apologize because I don't see a lot many uh, stakeholders who at, from the community level that are participating in the conference today. Um, so I think that is from our side a little bit uh, something we need to engage further, uh, at least at this level as well. And finally, uh, a key takeaway again from a legal perspective was uh, the previous uh, presenter said flexible government governance structures and that really struck me because it's all about climate adaptation. We have to adapt. This is the climate we're going to live in. Uh, so how do we go about adaptation? For me, the key takeaway was, uh, you know, thinking about flexible governance structures that are going to actually help us. So the list of uh, things to work on is pretty long. Um, we all offer our own uh, specializations from our own perspective. I think FNF's role as a convener, bringing together issues that are pertinent to South Asia has been really, really critical. So we're very grateful for FNF playing that role and bringing us together. On behalf of uh, Frederick Norman Stiftung, uh, Samridhi, the German Embassy in Kathmandu, German Nepal Friendship Association, once again, thank you very much to our distinguished guests, honorable minister who joined us this morning, the high-level delegation from Germany, uh, representatives from bilateral and multilateral and other development organizations present here today, scholars from South Asia, um, representatives from media, civil society, uh, from all across, I wouldn't say South Asia, Asia, because we also have uh, further participation. Uh, we really would like to thank you very much. Thank you very much to the technical team who put together the conference, the organizers, uh, the people you see running around with mics and for cameras. <laughs> thank you very much for all the effort that you've uh, put in. Um, and finally, I think we really need to thank our wonderful moderator who has been uh, guiding us, making sure <laughs> that we finish, start on time, finish on time. So I'd like to invite Dr. Klein and Nupur to a uh, special give thanks to Sarita. Um. <laughs>
only uh, that you uh, rightly said and uh, asked us, Lobsang, uh, to uh, continue this. Uh, I promise we will. Thank you very much to all of you. Seeing you tomorrow.